Let me give you a comparison. What do The Matrix, Blade Runner, and Total Recall have in common? The most crucial similarities come down to the genre of sci-fi, sure, but it goes a little deeper. There's an attitude, an environment, an archetypal, hard-boiled narrative style distinct from other sci-fi texts. Along with that, we also think of the period in which these texts take their origins, which roughly comprise the beginning of the 1980s to the mid-2000s. These texts usually concern a criminal underclass with an emphasis on the emergence of cybernetic technologies. Humanity's place in an altogether advanced computerized society is questioned. So the answer to the question of what subgenre do these texts belong is answered by William Gibson, a figurehead of what he coined the cyberpunk movement in literature. The cyberpunk subgenre followed the ethos of the beats of the 1950s and 60s in the US in their resolution to pay attention to street culture, the subterranean society that engaged in drugs and avant-garde communist sympathies. With an advancement in technology in the 70s and 80s, however, new emerging cultures were rearing such as punk music, computers, body modification in early cosmetic surgery and gamer and hacker culture, most obviously portrayed in the titular story of this collection, Burning Chrome. Technology and crime's place in these stories is foregrounded. Burning Chrome, for example, is a techno heist in which a hacker must plug himself into a Russian program which could be used to fool corporate firewalls and steal money online. The idea of transgressing geographical space and entering a new cyberspace has been since readapted in many different ways. Johnny Mnemonic takes a different view of technology to Burning Chrome, where Burning Chrome seeks to present cyberspace as alternative to reality. Johnny Mnemonic presents the cyber as wholly integrated within our own reality of objects, so much so that people themselves are basically machines. Johnny is a data courier who literally has a memory disk in a neural uplink inside his brain, the contents of which are hotly desired by the Japanese mob, the Yakuza. The white-hot intensity of Gibson's prose counters so much of what he would term right-wing science fiction, a left-wing science fiction he felt was necessary in an age of increasing cosmopolitanism, which sought to unroot and examine the likelihood of a capitalist-driven dystopia, both in the future and already extent in the present. He said, When people write about the future, it's never about the future. It can only be about the time in which it was written and the known history before that. We have no access to the future, but we can spend scenarios. Far from being an expose, these stories glorify street smarts as the innovative force deciding the use and market for technology. This is something called the law of the street. The street finds its own use for things, meaning sometimes the design use is binned, and instead the technology takes on an unexpected use, such as the reinvention of the turntable for hip-hop artists in the 80s to create a playback loop. Plurality and internationalization of the world called for a transcultural new language. Primarily in Gibson's case, Japanese and Russian words became the preferred technique. Gibson was well aware of the technique of total immersion through specific language, so he picked his words with care, picking up words while eavesdropping at computer conventions. I want there to be a science fiction that's like listening to The Clash, he said, and some of the new words he picked up reflect that. Myoelectric, Xenon, Comsat, Servo, he even used the word modem before it had any outside use. Some words were remote, like Zori from Japanese or Salyut from Russian. The result of reflecting the transcultural radically shifted the trajectory of science fiction iconography. Instead of aliens and monsters, now we were seeing images like this, the iconography of the information age before there was an internet. And because of all of this, we owe a debt to William Gibson for realizing a future in which technological advancement must be critically examined and for revealing what a capitalist dystopia could mean for the common people.